Life was never easy for Diane Ross, who was dealt several medical blows early in life. She was a very tough lady. Diane suffered from a blood clotting disorder and lost both her legs before the age of 30. Her sister, Lindy Barton, says she refused to let it get her down. Always bounced back, even when we didn't think she would. And while Diane's health continued to plague her through the years, she went on to have a daughter and eventually became a grandmother. She went through a lot of pain. And what kept her going was her grandson. She loved her grandson. Diane was with her five-year-old grandson, Michael, in the early morning hours of August 7th, 1991, when her life was brutally cut short. It was so hideous that it happened to someone like her. Diane was sleeping in bed with Michael in her secluded mobile home off 11 Mile Road on the outskirts of Midland County. What makes it so hard was that she didn't stand a chance. She was in her bed, legless. She could not fight back. She couldn't try to run. Investigators say sometime after midnight, a masked killer entered her home and nearly clubbed her to death with a blunt object. You could see where she was rolling and moving and trying to protect herself, but there's only so much she can do. I mean, there, there were uh, wounds you know, throughout her body. What kind of person, describe what kind of person would do this? A sick individual. A very sick individual. Investigators say Diane's grandson Michael witnessed the vicious attack, but the killer never laid a hand on him. We believe that he knew the child. Uh, he didn't injure the child, hit the child, and he left that child alone. Detectives believe Diane also knew her killer. He or she hated or was very, very, very upset at the time. And yes, because they just continued to beat and beat and beat and beat. Diane did not die during the attack. She was taken to a hospital in Midland. When Lindy found out about the attack, she rushed to the hospital. Diane's injuries were so bad, doctors advised Lindy not to go into her room. What she did glimpse shocked her to the core. I remember thinking, why does she have such a small pillow? And it wasn't the pillow. Her head was about twice the size of average from the skull fractures and the swelling. Diane was brain dead. She was taken off life support and died a few hours later. Not only did Lindy have to deal with her sister's death, she says she lived in fear, not knowing why or who would want to kill Diane, and neither did investigators. We, we have a lot, of, a lot of evidence from the scene, but a not, nothing that's telling us anything. We don't have anything to match up with the person or you know, if we throw names out there and check for fingerprints and things of that nature, that's just not there. The only thing Michael could tell police, a bad man with a mask hurt his grandmother. It's been nearly 21 years since Diane was murdered. The crime scene no longer exists, the mobile home is gone, but the memory of what happened here still haunts Lindy and her family. Through the years, different investigators took over the case and each had several suspects, but nothing panned out. But one thing for certain, it had to be someone Diane and her family knew. It's just like living in a horror film because you're not sure if you're talking to the person responsible. The Midland County Sheriff's Department is releasing very little details of the crime scene. The person that knows of that information is the suspect. That's the only person that knows what that crime scene looked like. Sheriff Jerry Nielsen says he's hoping someone will come forward with information, but he's also planning on using new technology to help solve the crime. It's important to me and our office here at the Sheriff's Office to let the family and the public know that we do care about what happened to them even 21 years ago. We haven't forgot them and we won't forget them. And neither will Lindy, who vows she'll never rest until Diane's killer is found, but she knows it won't be easy. We miss her and it's, it doesn't matter how many years go by, there's still that question and cloud over your head when there's family events and she can't be there. And it's just never goes away. It's always there. Jenny Suniga, NBC 25 News.